All right, so I only have 10 minutes on the clock right now to see if I can get a game over screen created. Now, typically, I would have copied something like my end of session summary screen and just adjusted it, but I want to teach you a little bit about how I'll do this. So the first thing I'm going to do is grab a color rect here, and that shows a little in the top little corner. It's part of a canvas layer, so that's on the third layer, which is going to bring it forward on top of other things like my foreground layer and my background layer, uh, and just make sure everything pops on the front. We'll grab the color rect and go up to this little plus sign and click on the bottom right full rect so it goes everywhere. It's a little bright, so let's grab the value and go to the dark side. Uh, and we can grab the opacity or the alpha here and bring it down to 100 just to give it that kind of little, that subtle like background dark um, kind of color here. We're going to rename this to be uh, game over. And we will add in a few things here. The first thing I'm going to do is a panel container as well as a margin container. And inside of that, we'll do a V box. And inside of that, we'll do a label. And on the label here, we're gonna say game over all caps. Uh, and then we can take this panel container and push it into the center using those anchor presets. Now it's in the center. And we'll control and click on these little things to bring them out on either side. Make sure that our game over is in the center. And then in here, I have some custom themes here, which essentially the way I use these, it's just a default theme with nothing set other than a default font size. And so I have a few of those set for different sizes across my game. So that if I want to be able to scale up or easily change how big large font is across the board, I can grab large font and throw it in here. It, it works out pretty well for, for stuff like that, but you just slap it in. It uses the font set there and the, uh, the default font as well. But you could also come down to the label and go to your theme overrides and custom set the font stuff if you wanted to have some special font for your game over thing right there and kind of play around with all these theme overrides to, to get it just how you want to have it. Uh, the next step here is going to be grabbing the margin container. And the big thing I always do with margin containers is, spoiler, set the margin on things just to give everything a little bit, no, not 101, uh, just 10, just to give everything a little bit of padding around the outside there. Uh, finally here, we're going to grab our panel container, go to styles panel, uh, and create a new style box flat. I'm going to come in here and grab my, the background color I like, which is this nice kind of uh, muted color there. The border width, we're going to do a border of five across the board. We can change the border color to be our dark color. And then I think I have a little bit of, I think I'm in this project, I'm doing like a, just a slight, uh, corner radius here. You can see that just kind of gives it a nice subtle outline as well. Our label stands out a little bit too much for my liking. So I'm going to go down here to the theme overrides, grab the font color, and change that to be the color I like here. Uh, now we can uh, go ahead into this main script I have uh, and grab down and create a new method that's called like function on uh, game over. And on game over is simply going to grab. Uh, a reference using this unique uh, access as unique modifier. Because if you just grab and drop this in here, this is now a specific path to where this game over screen is located. And so if I move this to somewhere not under UI, it would break and I need to come back here and, and Godot would yell at me. And I don't like when Godot yells at me. I like to make my projects a little bit more resilient because I'm a silly monkey. Um, and that's where this percent sign comes in here. So you right click, um, right click, access as unique name and then you can click and drag it over now no matter where i throw this in this scene game over will always kind of go to the same spot and it kind of makes your code a little bit more resilient and we're simply going to just show at this point um, now the next thing i need to do is i have these game states here so i'm going to go into my utility script grab game states and add a new state for game over and then on if we go back one step two step we can go here and say that the global dot game state, which is just how I keep track of that state, equals util dot game states uh, dot game over. Uh, now, the next thing I need to do is find all the places where I emit this signal. So whenever my game state changed, I emit, hey, the state changed, so that the things that care about that will have to do something about it. Breaker minion not used right now. Uh, we have the, our main script here, which, which is used. And we'll grab that really quickly and say on game over. Oh my gosh, we oh, look at that. We have we have five and a half minutes. Yeah, we have plenty of time for a cup, uh, a little cup of tea. Uh, cup of tea. This is coffee. All right, let's keep going. So we have game over here. We're gonna set the process to false just because this is what I. It's how I'm making everything go. I don't. I don't that's not what this video is about, Aramis. We're not explaining all, all all of how my game works. The final thing is gonna be this clicker. 
And this clicker is what the auto clicker in the game is. So when we go to game over, we just basically need to do what we do here and stop the auto clicking, stop the processing and hide it so that it, um, that it just works. Uh, so now we're in main, we need a, a way to call game over. And I think the best way to do that is going to be on black hole grow. So the way you're going to win a game about a black hole is getting your black hole to be big enough. That sucks in the whole screen. But for now, we'll just say whenever, whenever this grows, that'll be good enough for us. Uh, at this point, I think we're pretty good. I'm going to want to go up to my ready function and then say in here, uh, we'll do game over dot hide just to make sure we hide it uh, whenever the game loads. And that way I don't have to worry about it again, trying to future proof my project. So let me give myself a bunch of money and quickly end it. I have this really nice debugger over there to help me like test stuff out this really quickly. I'll make a video if you want about how to do that and kind of how I technically maybe structure my project to allow for that tool right there. Cause I can just like quickly hit a bunch of money here. I can reset my money and grab my money and, and get a bunch of upgrades. Maybe I'll, maybe someday I'll have a button that just unlocks all the upgrades on the tree as well. So this should be enough to at least get us to at the point where we can level up our black hole. You can see this is a very satisfying game. And there we go. The timer stopped. The background still moves, which I think is fine. The last thing we're gonna need to do here is add in a bunch of buttons. I have some custom buttons set up. Uh, so we're just gonna grab those in here and create a bunch of them. So I need three buttons. Um, the first one is gonna be play, uh, maybe we'll call it restart. Restart. Uh, this one will be just one more session. And this one can be a uh, wish list. Uh, and so we'll grab uh, the name here and say restart. Hopefully I spelled that correctly because I am dyslexic. And we'll do uh, just one more session. And then here we'll do wish, wish list on stage. Steam. Uh, these custom buttons are just a button with a little bit of a tweening component to allow me to kind of scale it up and down as you hover over it and play a little bit of an audio effect. So if I ever want to change that across my project, it's all in one easy place. A normal button would work perfectly fine. If you wanted to, if you got a, a normal button created and you wanted to come down and change some of the styles, you could create the style box flat, things like we just did with the, the panel container. You could customize how the button works. Again, messing around with all these theme overrides is a great way to get I'm familiar with how with how those uh, different things work and and just being um, comfortable being a little bit uncomfortable. So we'll make these all unique and we'll grab uh, restart and we'll connect a pressed one there. We'll grab pressed for one more session and we'll grab pressed for wish list on Steam. Uh, so when we restart, uh, if we go to method restart, what we're going to do is we're going to get tree uh, get tree dot reload current scene that'll simply reload the current scene as it says uh one more session we need to do global um i think i have this in my end run summary yeah we have a go again button uh we can grab here and say scene changer dot do transition that this is going to be the way i transition between my scenes i can simply call that here and then make sure we grab the reference to our game over um node and say hide. So we hide the game over node, we do the transition to the main scene again. And the last thing we need to do is gonna be to go to wish list. And it looks like I already had that set up, which is absolutely a happy accident. Uh, okay, I think that's good. Um, from a, a visual standpoint, we could probably take this and just make it, uh, make it small, make sure it's in the center of the screen. And then we can even go in here and give our, uh, our nodes are a little bit squished. There are buttons, I wanna give some separation. So we do like 15 to just give everything a little bit more breathing room uh, to go. And I'll customize this and make it a lot prettier and all that fun stuff in the future. Um, but I think that's pretty good. So let's go ahead and give ourselves a bunch of, um, a bunch of money. I go to upgrade screen, uh, grab a bunch of these nodes. Quick, 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 we are, we're running out of time. I gotta do the outro still. Uh, go again one more time. And 
Click, click, boom, bang, bing, here we go. A little bit more. And uh, wishlist on Steam, which is something you can go and do right now. You can click the wishlist on Steam button down here. It helps out. The demo should be live on Steam in about a week. And after that, I'm going to be live on Twitch as this video goes down. So if you have any questions about how to how to do this or something like that, go follow me over on Twitch and hang out. And we can work on a game about, about a black hole. And uh, there's the restart button and all that fun stuff working. And boom, look at that. I'm done.